Boo! <gasps> did I scare you? Yeah, you did. That's so crazy. We, I'm kind of sick. Sometimes I've scared you. you. You scare me all the time. I have a video. You wake up and I'm Imagine scared. they're getting a video right out of the gate this time. Immediate flashback. What? How did you fucking scare me? I was hiding. You were in the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, I was. And it's a video where we must be like eight or nine. I honestly think you may be mom's favorite in it. Wouldn't be a surprise. I mean, I was wearing that shirt like clockwork. And you're like walking out. I I could do it so well. You walk out of the bathroom. I go, boo! And you go, <laughs> just like that. With a like, full body shriek. And I like start cracking up my devilish little laugh. Yeah. Scaring somebody, the thrill that you have before the scare is worth it. It's is the whole, worth it. It's the, it's the whole thing. thing. Yeah. You're like, they're going to be so scared. Remember a few, like maybe two months ago when Jill actually hid outside of our apartment on our, our balcony for 45 minutes mm-hmm. as you, you come home, I'm in my room pretending everything's normal. Jill's on the balcony. <laughs> it's pitch black. She's going, Andrew. I'm watching you just look around and then go back to cooking. (laughs) She's going, Andrew. You're like, is that you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And you shrug and you continue to cook. I'm like, you know what? Like, if I'm going to hear those little voices in my head, let me hear those voices in my head. It's actually, like, indicative that maybe you are hearing some stuff in your head. I was also just, like, focused on cooking. I had a long day at work. I come home. I'm ready to whip something up. But if someone was home invading us and they were whispering your name. Yeah, Joe, we're dead. You would just continue to cook a pasta? At that point, I accept my fate. That's really impressive. Yeah. Good children. I'm going to change it up. I'm deciding every week. I'm going to like keep saying it until it feels right. It might Mm -hmm. go back to what it used to be, but I had a few thoughts that I'm going to share with the group. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where me and Andrew reflect on our 21 years of friendship growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and nightmares (gasps) that that entails. A nightmare? I've just been having these Lena Dunham nightmares every single night. I mean, we we can't even watch a single thing without you going into a spiral. I'm going into electric shock (laughs) when I watch Girls. Like... It's I'm like, I'm fun. laughing. I'm mindless. You're the entire I time. We're like, you, I'm like, isn't this so fucked up? Joe's writing it as journal. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's like, give me a second. Pauses the show, runs in, gets his little journal, is jotting down notes. And he's like, I just like, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I, I am not in a horror bath. I'm literally having nightmares. <laughs> nightmares about the fact that that is like, exactly who I am. It's just so crazy because like, I'm willing to give a lot of characters in TV a lot of credit for who mm-hmm. I am today. Yep. I didn't watch Girls. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was the one I skipped. So it and was somehow, freaking you out. It is like you skipped that. You did not take anything that she was doing. And you see that and you're like, wait. I'm like, I fucking suck. I'm also an unemployed writer who. <laughs> <laughs> in a way. No. In a way, I'm underemployed. Under- I definitely you're- could be working more <laughs> um, for sure. Yeah, no, but that's just like, that's been keeping me up at night. And I, lo- I, I do love a nightmare usually yeah. because it's drama and yep. like it's free TV. But a stress stream. A you, stress dream is a different story, and that's what's been happening. Yeah, you've been tossing and turning. I've literally had a full night's sleep you're doing good children. That is the craziest thing. Again, that was me last night, but that is the same exact... That would be me before a test, mm. me before work, anything. It's playing those situations out it's in your so, head. I've done, I mean, when I started at 45, also, the night before yeah. that, I had a full... I did the entire thing, and you said, you can only do nine pound weights. <gasps> this week we're talking about fears wow. and fears are broad but we're talking about childhood fears we're talking about fear of judgment rejection fear factors yeah for sure. honestly i'm gonna talk about fear of insects i'll bring it up because oh i have a God. few i have a few i'll see if you remember that by the end of this episode i got a lot of fear oh my entire life has just been fear it's a saturday morning you're 11 years old. You had a tough week. 
You yeah. know, you had mm-hmm. a few tests. Yeah, you you had sports. You did anything. You're like, I just want to sleep. I got to sleep in past eleven. Yeah, you know, it's just <laughs> one of those. It was days. always like a twelve thirty wake up. Like, what was normal insane. about that? No, I was like always sleeping so late. But you wake up to the sound of the vacuum. Vacuum, yeah. And I what know. is your immediate first thought? Oh, fuck! I'm like, how much longer can I stay in this bed before? The devil comes like, <laughs> no. before I am taken away from before, my yeah. sweet life. Yeah, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna dip toe to the bathroom because I have to pee. But oh, then yeah. I have to go. I'm peeing out the window. Then I you have to go right back into my room because I can't let my mom know that I'm up. In case you're you haven't experienced this, it is that your mom is up bright and early cleaning, yeah, bright. and that typically means weekend ruined. Yeah, I mean, At the like very you're starting least all your weekend. Of Saturday ruined. Yeah, because then you go down the stairs. This would like let me paint a picture for you. You go down the stairs. It could be fine. It could be great, and you could be willing to help. Like and like, you but it also could just like, be a vacuum. I'm gonna. Yeah, it's the moment that you walk down those stairs, and there and are two black garbage bags. <laughs> your mother is on the floor. <laughs> the refrigerator entire door. refrigerator is cleaned yep. out, empty, and she's like oh, scrubbing. <laughs> Wish someone help. Looks like they have been doing actually a 5K. <laughs> yeah. Fatigued, yes. sweating, exhausted. And you're like, hey. And then you read the situation and you're like, okay, if it was intense, you're like, how can I help? Yeah, of course. If it's not, you're like, what's for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> I want to take it back to nightmares. Oh my God. As a child. Recurring? Oh, recurring. Absolutely. Yeah. I used to have footstep nightmares. What does that mean? What does that mean? I used to have nightmares that it was dark out and I was walking on the street and all I would hear is and I would turn around and they'd be like, what? And then I'd keep walking and it would get and they'd be like, what the hell? And then I would turn around and someone would be chasing after me. I'm sick to my stomach. Yeah. And I just kind of am like... I'm kind of like... I actually feel ill. Yeah, <laughs> like, what would that what did that mean? I'm sure someone can tell us, because I can't tell you. I'm going to say that you were avoiding something. Could be... Gay? Gay! I was <laughs> eight, but yeah, probably. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. I used to have... It was very surrealist. Mm-hmm. It happened often. Mm-hmm. I was on the edge of like a very brightly a bright green cliff with a bright blue sky, and there was a it was bright cinematic. It was a bright red like obeliskian statue, but it was like twisted. It was like a twist. It looked like a garment <gasps> that was like made of like ceramic. Okay. And it was glossy and it was red, and it like looked like it was just like twisting into the air. And then a yellow canary. So think about this: the colors that are happening Joe, are crazy, you guys. This is great. It's this is blue. Seuss. It was very, it was Susy, but imagine it more like Dolly, like okay. Salvador Dolly vibes. And then the canary, and I was standing on the edge of this cliff. The canary would then hit the the statue. The statue would fall from the cliff, and it would land on like a beach below and shatter. And it was like for some reason a nightmare for me. I honestly. <laughs> I also can't comprehend that one because I know I haven't had like a vivid nightmare since I was a child. Mm -hmm. Like to, but like, thank God. What were you going to say? I want to talk about wet dreams. You want to talk about (laughs) wet dreams? Bring them back. Like I'm so pissed. Like I literally remember like going through puberty and like hearing word about these wet dreams and and being like, like, I don't want to piss my bed. (laughs) <laughs> no, I was like, I'm waiting. Like, I was yeah. like so excited for the day. And then the day came. And I was like, this is the best day of my entire life. You know, I was like, this is officially yeah. like, we hit showtime. You know, like in the dreams. Because like, I've always yep. had an HBO dream. But yep. suddenly I was like, we're getting a little bit pornographic. Is, yeah, this is channel 305. I'm 12. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember like, again, I was very, I was always researching puberty. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like, these stop at some point and i was like no it won't and now do you still no i don't i was gonna be so if you said yes i would have stopped doing the podcast what if i lied well i wouldn't be surprised 
I would be so like that's I would never date again <laughs> if I could, if I could have a guaranteed wet dream every couple yeah, of months. Wh- forget about why it. Why do you need somebody in that I bed know. with you? No, it's a shame. Speaking of wet dream, no, no, what is it? No, I was just gonna talk about how much I sweat. <laughs> Are you still doing that? Um, no, because I do think that we fixed the air conditioning in this home, but I will say, regardless, like I'm still like I I run hot when I sleep. Yeah. So I do wake up and like the sheets will be soaked. Um, okay, and so we you, could are, ask you are still Jesse, doing that. my ex girlfriend, that yeah. I'm kind of anti white sheets now. I was like so big on white sheets, and now I have my little color sheets, and I yeah. love them. No. It's like, I feel like I'm an American girl doll. You, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for you. Have you ever had a fear of, like, shitting your pants? Every, I'm not joking, (laughs) every day of my life, yeah, 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 every morning when I go to work out, whatever the workout is, no matter, it's over. I'm like, oh, I just took pre-workout, I, like, pumped myself full of caffeine, Yep. I'm gonna shit my pants within seven seconds of doing this workout. Especially if you didn't have your morning shit yet, you're like, and I'm I never, doing I almost a jump never do squat. I wake up about four seconds before I had to leave the apartment so I don't have time. Yeah. And I'm like, guaranteed this Done. is gonna happen. And then I sometimes like, I don't know, I lose faith in my faculties. Yeah. Because then I'm like, in the middle of the work, and I'm like, oh, I was never gonna shit my pants. <laughs> but, like, what are the chances that you actually are, are gonna be like fully shit my pants? You're gonna lose public. control of your body right. and like and your whole just gonna go. That's something that I think has lasted since childhood to now is like the fear of shitting. I don't know if I've ever like publicly shit my pants. I have. I'm sure. Yeah, I've shit my pants like publicly um a few times. <laughs> and when was the most recent? The most recent were probably two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um I would say the earliest memory was probably like obviously when I was like four. The most vivid one was um I'm not even gonna get into it. It's so disgusting, but let's just say it was a full log that slid down this leg. I feel like actually really good that I got that off my chest. I don't. What are some other childhood fears that you've had? You know me. Like, I was always afraid of my entire family dying. I was always afraid of my house being burnt down. Like, when I, especially like coming back from a family vacation, I was always expecting us to turn onto our street and, and have it's our like house a series be gone. of unfortunate events. Yeah, no, that's why. That, that book, especially all these orphan books, yeah. I was always, always convinced that my parents were going to die in like a tragic accident. And I was, I mean, like, I should. If the thing is, all of these things, like, get your kid in therapy because I was terrified of like death in a crazy way. Yeah, and I rem- I remember sleeping in my parents' bed and having a- spending a whole night like grappling with the fact that people die, and I like I was like just silently being like, oh my god, like I'm gonna die, my sister's gonna yeah. die, my parents are gonna die, like yeah. who's gonna die first? When like, you let I'm- your brain spiral like that, it's 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 game cr- over. especially as a child, yeah, with like no coping mechanism. Yeah, I don't understand why the narrative still to this day, like for childhood, like children movies, is like both parents dead. It's the it's frozen the too. Dead. Kill him. Kill, Kill him. him. Every, <laughs> everything they're like get rid they're of like i want to build a snowman and then suddenly the parents are dead and you're like yeah we that's kind of nuts brooke and shields then, hannah montana dead. Hannah, dead harry potter dead, dead. Mufasa, mufasa dead. dead how can you not be afraid of death when everyone every, was dead every family family member every parent was dying dead. in these movies yeah it was like it's just the norm yeah i do believe like the closest i've ever been to death was my first time ever doing pop poppers. poppers that was genuinely <laughs> so cinematically horrifying <laughs> it could have been like an Ari Aster like hereditary film. first of all we were dressed like <laughs> we were in like was that a horror film we were in Midsummer. oh yeah so it was Ari Aster I had a flower crown on yeah no I that was my 23rd birthday yeah Joe and bleached his eyebrows. No, I didn't bleach my eyebrows. Oh, that was for the divine intervention of Joe Hedges. Yes. How can I forget? No, for this birthday, we went to House of Yes in Brooklyn. Yes. I we were, I was living on Long Island, so what I would famously do is rent a Sprinter van for everyone. <laughs> yep. Um, I missed the time when I wasn't paying rent. Yeah. Because I wasn't saving money, so I was spending all of my paychecks every single month on crazy shit. Yeah, I made everyone get into full, like, linens and whites, and we went as Midsummer to House of Yes. The theme was not Midsummer. That's when we went on roof. Yeah. My boyfriend at the time was roof, and I said to everyone, no one. <laughs> no one's allowed in that apartment. Because he was like, like, I hope my begging. roommate, my roommate, like, hates me, and, like, I don't, like, I don't want anyone in the apartment. 
everyone's like pissing their pants outside. They're like, please, Joe, please let us go into the apartment. I have to go to the bathroom. And I was like, shut up. He's like, shut up. Shut up. Ultimately, you guys got to go into the bathroom. Yeah, thank God. But yeah, so we're at that. We're at House of Yes. The music is pumping. I'm I'm like fucked up out of my mind. I'm covered in glitter, right? Yeah, you're covered in glitter. Yeah, my chest was like bright pink. No, that's the year earlier. It's not red, it's pink. I told the guy fucking Brooklyn Heights is 20 minutes away. From what? From here. Every time we've ever gone to House of Yes, it's been like, it actually is like a nightmare. Yes. Poppers come out. I want to speak on poppers really quickly because I don't want to be a bad influence. Yes. I personally, at this point in my life, don't think I'm ever gonna do poppers again. Yeah. Like, I think that poppers now are funny. Like, we have the giant poppers rug in our living room. I do think that they're scary. I'm like, that's a chemical. You know what I mean? It's like nail polish remover for a reason. Yeah, and like, we were talking about this last night. Like, we just don't do drugs. We just don't do that. Like, that's just something we don't do. Yeah, and none of our friends do either. No, yeah, like, that's the one thing which I think is... And I was like, I, that was during Girls. You I was actually like, is it were like, weird that we don't do drugs? I'm like, Joe, <laughs> no? What are you saying? I was like, I think it's really, really weird that... He's like, people them. are just doing drugs every single day. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> saying? Like, do like, you want me to really say normal. it's weird that we're not doing drugs? Like, what are you... Do you want to do drugs? No. Like, no, that's what I'm saying. Thing. Yeah, but I do think time, poppers like I've never I haven't heard about them. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you were like they were rock. new to you, which yeah. is crazy. Of course. Yeah, like we were at the house of yes, bass is bumping, the poppers come out. I hand them to you. I turn around. I turn back, and the poppers bottle is actually nestled in this nostril, shoved it's up, shoved nose. up my nose for at least forty-five seconds. Yeah, absolutely, shoved up your nose. Yeah, I will. Ne- my heart dropped because yeah. I was like, "You're, we're about, you're about to die." Yeah, my brain is about to burn. Brain damage. Yeah, and at the very least, burn. Yeah, through your nose. Yeah, I remember ripping that bottle out of your nose, and I was like, "What?" And then you went and you're got trying to have fun, a crab slice. And then I immediately left. I did an Irish goodbye. Told nobody I was leaving. But and also, it, you couldn't technically leave because we had to wait for the bus. Hey, you leave. I will follow. Yeah, I had to wait for the bus. And like, once you leave, you can't get back in. So <laughs> I was like, actually, guys, I'm so over this. And I left by myself. Went to Artichoke. Walked to Artichoke Pizza and got a crab slice. And I don't even like seafood. And it was the creamiest slice I've ever had. I remember you texting me being like, where are you? I'm like... At Artichoke. <laughs> Where are you? Who feels? Are you afraid of ghosts? No. I was a go- Demons, I, ghost go- denier for a while. Ghost denier. Anyone who's denying ghosts, like, you're so fucking dumb. Accept <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If no, I'll accept it. Any any person denying a ghost, denying an alien, yep. denying Bigfoot, you're a fucking idiot. Denying Slender Man. The way Why that was Slender I supposed Man to be scared of a skinny little twink? twink. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Slender Man was just a twink. He was just a twink, and that's fine. And we were all afraid of him. And he was like in the woods, and right. I was supposed to be like, wait, so like. You're a woodsy twink? That's kind of hot. Slender Man was like a forest fairy. And he has a little suit. Yeah. Kind of hot. It's kind of like Man What play. do you think Slender Man's dick looks like? Long. Mm-hmm. I'm almost now imagining it very girthy. I I actually, <laughs> like, I, this is something that I ha- I can't. I can't. <laughs> I have a fear of this conversation. <laughs> truly. But <laughs> I will say that, like, when did Slender, Slender Man, like, popped up? I feel like we were in high school. Yeah, so 2010 was the beginning. Yeah, I have I think a few videos of, of, at the very least, me playing the Slender Man game. Yeah. Because that was when I think he really came into the mainstream yes. for us. That game really popped him off. So there's no way, to there's the no way of winning no matter what. Oh. Stuff just got serious. Urban legends are so crazy. Like, crazy. It's our folklore. You know what I mean? Like, that will be passed down from generation to generation. Slender Man specifically really did scare me for a little yeah. bit. You're like, is it a tree or is it Slender Man? Yeah. And then I'm like, is he at my window? Mm-hmm. I was always afraid of a dark window at night. Yep. That always made me very, very, very sick to my oh, stomach. yes. Growing up on a farm, especially, like, when you're on that property at night, like... It's just so big. It's like, yeah, like, acres. Acres yeah. and acres upstate New York. And looking out at that... 
horrifying yeah, at night. Yeah, I can only imagine. And then you Joe. hear, you know, there's coyotes, there's wolves. You hear screaming like that. Foxes sound like humans when they scream. And yes. like, again, I had to learn from a very young age. Yeah. I was always on that, always at the farm. Did you, was your dad ever going on the tractor late at night and you heard that noise and you got startled? All, and all the time. I was not only scared of windows, but let's say it, a basement. I still get sick to my stomach about it. If you are in a dark basement or going down into a dark basement, I'm sprinting. Yeah, I'm running down the stairs. I'm out of all fours. Like, oh holy shit! Totally yeah. taking your like, hands and feet, gazelling up the yes, steps, yes, slamming that light off and slamming. The so door. scary, especially your ba- my, my my basement in my house is unfinished. So like, it is like probably one of the scariest things that you can possibly go into. My but I would never scared do it. you. Not your it's basement ha- specifically, haunted. Joe. Like, no, yeah, that's why I think I felt that energy. It has something. There's a. I in that would basement. go down in that basement, that hallway. While it's short in oh in God. actual in actuality, it's the longest hallway. You're, you're trying to watch a movie. You're just trying to watch a movie. Your back is to that hallway, and, and I'm like the this the entire off. time. I'm like this. Yep. Wait. And and the laundry room. It's the laundry room. It's the laundry it room. was nothing but that laundry. I'm room. actually. Getting full body chill. I'm like not even saying it in a funny way. I'm getting full body chills thinking about how deeply haunted that basement is. The laundry room and that damn office. Why did your dad freak you out? Oh, Joe, it was like what was behind that door for me. I think that one time, honestly, I remember being in the bathroom and you like yeah, I was terrorizing smacked you. the side like from the laundry room smacked yeah and I that that put me over the edge and that wasn't yeah. even funny no. that was like that was like Joe you actually traumatized me and I don't like your basement <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I just want to say that here right here and now I don't like your basement you still don't to this day I feel like we got comfortable with it I did in, get like, comfortable during quarantine yeah for sure they like prior once- to that yeah it was never fun Mm-mm. A fear like that, though, is a cardio yep. experience because you're like, how fast can I move my body yeah. to get into my room and slam my door shut yeah. and lock my door? That was my gym membership yes. like, as a child. Run, again, it was always, did you used to walk upstairs on all fours? Absolutely. What's that about? Being a child with an insane fear of everything does really help your imagination. Text chains, chain you... messages. You... If I got a text chain message, I thought I had to almost warn my family that's not dead. I feel like I probably multiple times like went hysterically sobbing into my mom and being like, I think we're gonna I'm gonna die tonight. <laughs> You're like, if you don't send this and message like, to that number. ten people, your Who's whole family's you gonna be slaughtered in your sleep. Whoever's like, texting you that is not your friend and it's you. <laughs> yeah, because I'm behind the phone freaking out and I can be like I who are the 10 people I can send this to and it was like I remember when about Carmen Winstead was her name who the hell is Carmen I don't want to even give her name power yeah I'm not going to say her name Carmen Winstead Mm-mm. I can I can text a few people I'm going to I'm going to start a text chain tonight I'm not kidding it's like if you don't send it to 10 people <laughs> Joe and you're going to show up in your house and start harmonizing at midnight <laughs> <laughs> um, people are like yes <laughs> um, her name was Carmen Winstead she drowned in a gutter i believe is the story like she fell into a gutter or somehow and drowned okay and if you didn't send that to time if you didn't i love the motivation of these like spirits yeah. they're like you gotta get this out here you gotta get yeah. this. they're you on, gotta get their own PR. Story. no like slender man carmen winstead they're doing their own pr but yeah. they were like i'm gonna kill you if you don't spread my name around town yeah. if Put my name in people's know. mouths and carmen winstead for me was the scariest one it's just like I was what? always afraid of gutters after that. I mean, text chains in general, it's like, it was a really good way to like, first of all, I never really liked being on my phone, but when I received one of those, like you had to. And the idea of not responding to it or sending it out, it would linger in my mind the entire time. And I'd be like, I, I, I usually didn't pass them along. I usually mm-hmm. was like, I had to. I was like, piece of I'm going to take the bullet. You know what I mean? And you went to sleep but at some, night knowing no, I didn't you were going to sleep. die? I didn't go to sleep. I stayed awake the whole time. But I do also feel like sometimes they were like, send this to 10 people. And I was like, I don't know 10 people. Yeah, that was the time. I was like, now I have to send it to like my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do about that. I would that. send it to like probably you. I hate to say it. I do feel like I was sending the text chain, like the chain messages to people who I felt like 
deserved it more. <gasps> like, I wouldn't give it to people who I thought were, like, too nice. You were like, I've never liked your mother or your mother, <laughs> so I'm going to send you this text, Jane, because everyone's dead to me. I was and... like, some people are too sweet. They're going to yeah. stress out too much. Bloody Mary. They were like, do three spins. No, do it, was a, few it was spins. a ballet routine. It was a bla- You were doing pirouette. Bloody Mary was Abby Lee Miller. Yes. She was like, do your spins. <laughs> do your spins. And like, you're going to be so dizzy that you're going to see a red light in the mirror. Did that ever happen? You saw a red light? I saw a red light. No, Andrew. I will never forget before I went on stage at my community theater church musical, this is probably pre-throwing up from anxiety. Everyone was like, get in the bathroom and see Bloody Mary. What Just you? you? Yeah. They were like, we all, we all did it. We all did it. And I was like, what are you saying? Like, okay, like, I'll do it. Like, I'm kind of scared, you guys. They were like, okay, so we're going to put you in there. We're going to turn the lights off. We're going to shut the door. And we're going, you're going to spin around a few times. And then you're going to look into the mirror for that red light. And you're going to see her face. And I'm in this scary church. I mean, the recipes for did itself. You see I was her? screaming. I was screaming. I was like, let me out, let me out. You know what I mean? They were they were at the door. They were and they wouldn't let you out. No, of course not. I would never terrorize anybody besides like oh, murder please. in the dark. <sighs> oh my god, do we tell that story? I think we should. Okay, I'm gonna set the scene. It is October 2020. Yes. I I mean, like, I'm not trying to brag, but I was really good with COVID. Like, I was crazy with COVID. Yeah. Like, I had not even seen people like outside on the street. No. Like we I, would hang out, but like not even 10 yet. feet apart oh, yeah we were still yeah in your backyard i hadn't seen a single soul we planned a trip to long branch new jersey long branch new jersey is I honestly was, like I'm my putting it on record Fiji. the best vacation of my entire life mm-hmm. and like to this day i think if i hear long branch new jersey i actually get emotional like yep. it felt like my honeymoon yes. it was the best experience of my entire life we go with a few friends me and you are peak eating disorder we were waking up in the morning taking pre-workout and doing actually hit workouts on in the backyard and then going, and then going for a for two runs. mile run everyone else is just waking up <laughs> and we're like this is so good it's like night two everyone's been having a really good time we're, we've made some we've done some content we drank some ales we took edibles yeah so everyone's like you know in a good mindset andrew suggests playing murder in the dark which for those of you who don't know what Murder in the Dark is, this is a game that I grew up on as a child, which like with all of my cousins, we would shut the lights off. You write like murderer, you write like civilian and detective, and you crumple them up and you pick who you are. And then you shut the lights off, you walk around this dark room and you're shaking people's hands. You let it go for a little bit if you're the murderer, and then you squeeze someone's hand, they scream, the detective runs in. Then you line him up and you said, and then you then you do your job as it a detective. Is genuinely one of the most fun games I've ever played. Yes. I think that that's like the plot of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. So we're doing this. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's really scary. It's really scary. It's really, really scary. It's a horrifying game. It gets more scary when Andrew is, are you the killer? No, just, I just think I was like... I have nowhere. You get on all fours. It's so scarily primal. You're galloping yeah, around like, the pitch black am kitchen. I, am I making noises? Am I like... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is actually scared out of their fucking minds. Like, I was genuinely scared for my life. Oh my. The lights come on, <laughs> and Alex turns to us, looking at her phone and goes, Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died. And Rachel goes, yeah, yeah I, know. I know. I didn't want to tell you guys. The wave of emotion in that experience mm-hmm. is something I've never recovered from. And maybe yeah. the reason I love Long Branch so yeah. much is because that was so deeply traumatic. That we I experienced bonded. every emotion in like the most pure and like heightened, heightened form. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, Ruth. Rest in peace, Ruth. I'd play Murder in the Dark again. That's a big iPad. I know. But it looks small with those hands. These big hands. <laughs> Are you just doing it performatively now? Like you just want people to know that like you have an iPad? Well, I'm actually looking. I'm not even kidding. I'm on my nudes folder on my iPad, so I'm just snipping it down. Joe, what the hell? Because it's like you know, like you have like you have like rare nudes. No, I okay. honestly don't take. I don't like. I don't. I, I do. have about three. Oh, I at one point I'm not kidding, and this is indicative of like a lot of mental illness. 
I think I had about 2,700 pictures in my hidden folder. Are you now I have sick? Like, now I have like 200. Like I deleted a lot of them. But like some of them are on here. They're different. And I'm like, oh my God, memories, you know? Yeah, no, I do. I, it's like the purest I I form. Like, you know me. Like I'm all about like nostalgia and like old pictures. You're and right. like I'm not going to pretend that nudes are not part of that. I was thinking about this. I'm not kidding. A few days ago, I was like, I don't take enough pictures of myself period secondly naked like you're gonna i want to look back on those i am that's what i look i'm looking back at myself at 21 and i'm like oh my god like the person i was the news i was taking i think i have a fear of dating why i don't want to like it's not that i actually well yeah i guess i'm just gonna be vulnerable it's not that i genuinely see dating as something that's scary yeah. but i do think i'm holding myself back from it so severely Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, why am I subconsciously doing that? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I must be afraid of it. I think it honestly is like a fear of sex. You know what I mean? Oh. Which is crazy. Is it is it sex or is it intimacy? No, I love intimacy. Yes. I like, love you intimacy. You are very, yeah. I am like on a date. It's so crazy that I haven't worked through this. When I go on a date, like especially a first date, 90% of the date is me being like, are we going to have sex? And, like, me not being excited about the concept of it. Oh, no. You know what I mean? See, like, I'm the complete opposite. You're like, we're going to have sex. <laughs> I'm like, I know, that's sex? normal. That's a normal outlook Yeah, but I think that, like, I think that while you don't struggle with intimacy, I struggle with intimacy. And while you struggle with sex, I don't struggle with sex. We're like Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are. Like this we is our New York minute. so minutes. well with our, our mental illnesses and traumas. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so, like, I don't know, like, because there's definitely a reason why I haven't gone on a date since May, and that was, like, one date prior to that was, like, legit January. Yeah. Is it a fear of dating, or is it a fear of rejection? Originally, it was a fear of, like, body, as yeah. we know. We've talked about it. Yes. And it definitely is still that but i do think i've now like put myself out there much more where like i'm not like afraid that someone's gonna see me without a shirt on and be shocked yeah and like that's psychotic that i was ever thinking that yeah now it's not even like a fear of rejection maybe it is a fear of rejection because it's like um this is really therapy. Yeah, I'm actually because I'm like, not I'm saying anything to let you spiral. I'm yeah, yeah you're not. We're it's actually, a lot. I need you to speak yeah. <laughs> um, because it's like I don't. Most men that I've gone on dates with, I have wanted to date, mm -hmm. but I don't find the conventional attractive. But I'm like, maybe I do. Maybe you do, and you're just afraid. So to repressed, it. like so yeah. deeply repressed. Yeah, that fucking sucks. It does. Like, no, because think. if I was to just if I were to describe my dream man in this moment, it would be Kristoff from Frozen. Oh, Joe, <laughs> yes. I think a fear of rejection translates to dating for me for sure, for <sighs> friendship, for people pleasing, for everything. I think yeah. that is one of my number one fears is like someone just not liking me. And I think the reason that I've deleted all of my apps and I clear everything is because it's like when you have the trajectory and we've talked about this when you're just constantly being ghosted and you're like yeah. oh I've been rejected while it's not even like actually rejection I take it as rejection it's honestly worse rejection because you get to choose why they rejected yeah. you exactly <laughs> so you pick the worst possible option and you know I'm spiraling being like what did I say right that's what I'm saying because I so do evil. give everybody the benefit of the doubt I really do like in everything that yeah. I do I meet people I'm like excited to meet people I go on dates and I'm like I leave a date and most of the times I'm like that's my problem too like the date could not even be that good and I'm like that was a good date. You know what I mean? Like I actually had a pretty good time and I think the conversation was flowing, whatever. We kissed, whatever. And then it's like block. And then you're like, oh my God, they just really, they really, they really thought it was me. disgusting. Right. I was a literal pig no. and I, I can't have a conversation. I'm oh. having a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, actually like, I didn't hear a word you said. Yeah, I no. actually was fully thinking about how I need to apologize to every single man that I've ever like not given a valid explanation as yeah. to why I didn't want to continue seeing them. Yeah. So that sucks, but do you fear of confrontation. Right do you want to do it right here? Should I go through the list? Fear of confrontation though. That's pretty much why people ghost. Yeah. We face our, well, sometimes. I can't handle someone ghosting me. But I ghost people. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. I hate them because I hate 
myself. No, but yeah, I have a, I have a huge fear of confrontation. Yeah, and that's what again, like we've talked about ghosting a lot. And yeah, like, that is what ghosting is. Yeah, like, because no one is ghosting to be evil, but it no. is evil to ghost. Yes. Listen, some people are gonna hate you. Some, some people, people are, are gonna always hate you. gonna hate you. Yeah, and it's fine. What's up? Nothing much. I I will say I, I'm getting to a point where like I know it's not sack time yet. You're a little hungry. But this stomach is turning. I had a fear of being drafted. Can we? Am I still up for all? Am I still eligible? You're done. Oh my god! Congratulations, Joe. You just turned Wait, 26. That's I'm that's pretty a, positive. That's really good to know. I never there was liked my something about that Cadet Kelly lesbian drama. I mean, yeah. That movie like is so aggressively gay. It's insane to me. Like it's not even like my typical like making everything gay. Like no. the fact that they paint her hair rainbow. Hmm. What else is that about? Do you think she knew? Which? Who? Lizzie. Hillary Duff. Do you think that Hillary Duff knew what was going on there or kind of went over She's her She's always head? been an ally. Yeah, she has. The Don't Say Gay video. <gasps> so raise your glass if you are wrong. Oh my God. Yeah. Look at this gorgeous little charcuterie. It's charcuterie boy. Charcuterie. And what's the best part about this board? What's the best part of this board? Yeah. That it's vegan cheese. There's definitely meats around it, but the cheese is, is dairy. dairy free. And it was sent to us by Good Planet. Good Planet. I've been eating this cheese for a couple of months now. I know. I actually can't even believe we still have some left. It really has. It's it's definitely satiated my cheese. Meat. Yeah. It's like we're all pretending they're not just lunchables. They're not lunchables. And I. This is a lunchable. Are, yeah. A lunchable is. A, it's like, elevated. My cheese is so good. Okay, I'm not just saying it because it sent it to us. Mm -hmm. It's really good vegan cheese. Well, I guess you guys know <laughs> that the microphone once again didn't record. I'm gonna be honest. It's time for us to stop using QuickTime yeah. to capture the audio, and I will. Yeah, I think that's. That'll be a change. It. The way that we're viewing the dairy-free cheese is like, it's nothing at all. No, it's a problem. Because I'm like, you know what? Like, it's just nothing. <laughs> it's really not going to do anything to my stomach, but, like, I shouldn't be having a full wheel of cheese. And you're often doing a charcuterie board. I am. It's something that you can just whip up. Charcuterie? Charcuterie? Would you like me to get a charcuterie board? Would you like to maybe He's going to do the little French voice. Do you want to go to the park? And I okay. Could, I could make us a charcuterie board. Okay. Maybe so we drink a glass of wine. Okay, so. Hello, you guys, and this is Good Children. I'm Joe Hedges, and this is the podcast where me and Andrew discuss the childhood trauma of- I think that, like, you being Parisian and you have growing up on the farm is basically, like, one and the same. It was a Parisian farm. It was a, re a farm in Paris. Yes. Anyway, it's time for The, the Girl's room. room. Question one. Okay. It's kind of like what we've been talking about every week, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um... Have you each ever been in a relationship? I'm 23 and pretty much in the closet. Every time I meet a cute guy, I convince myself I don't actually like him or I sabotage things so we don't get too close. I think I'm on track to die alone. Queen. Queenie. Queen. I think you're being extreme. Yeah, I, th I definitely think that's an extreme statement to make. Um, it made me like take a deep look into to my psyche. Die alone? Die alone. Come on. Have I been in a relationship? I would say that I, I was like, I saw somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. For about two months. And I think that we're not going to die alone. We have each other. You know exactly. I mean? like, yeah, worst so we're case, fine. Worst case, but, we're fine. But this is about them. Right. I've never been in a relationship longer than like five months. Um, So take that as you will. But I do think 23 is not like that old, especially for a yeah. gay person to like not be in a relationship. And I get the sabotage stuff. Yeah. I do... But I do think that if you're convincing yourself you don't actually like that person. You probably like, don't like that person. Yeah, you're not convincing yourself. You just don't like them. Like, no. if, if the perfect person comes... When the, when the right person comes along, you will know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you will know. And also, it's all about talking to them and, like, talking about, like, what you are looking for. Yeah. Communication. It's about communication. Like, I think that, like, for me, too, is something I've always struggled with is, like, communicating what I'm feeling, especially in that situation. It's like, yeah. if you want to take things slow, you want to take things slow. If you want to be in a relationship, you want to be in a relationship. But, like, you got to make sure that you're on the same page and know what timelines look like. It's kind of like maybe you should focus your time less on dating and more on yourself. Yeah. And, like, get to a point where you're like, if I go on a date, 
and it goes well. If you're in the closet, it's just like hard to see what the next step is. And because that's probably you shouldn't, why you block it out as well. Yeah, you shouldn't have to like get somewhere with somebody to be like, oh, this is a legitimate relationship. Now I'm going to come out. Yeah, no one else should be the reason that you come out. No. It should be about you. No. Thank you guys so much once again for tuning in to another episode of Good Children. You know where to find us. You know where to find us on Instagram at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges, H E G Y E S. I'm so close to, I'm really close to no, you. And like you guys, it's gonna happen. Cut it out. Let's just do it. It's gonna happen by next episode. Okay. I'll say it. Great. Because I like, I love projections. It's like, a, we're like 150 away. So it's yeah. Should. When that happens, I don't Royal, even, I'm so scared. It's gonna be like, no, like the way that my inner child is gonna be healed through Instagram followers sucks, but it's I'm true. Scared. It's gonna change my life. Yeah. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, M U S C A R E L L A. I'm 2,700 away. So you guys better pick it up. Pick Kinda it up. Close. Kinda close. Kinda close. I mean, like, regardless of how many followers we have, the Good Children podcast one. We'll always just do better than us. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Um, Good for you guys. Like, I yeah. love that. It really, it's really not really appreciate it, you guys. Oh my God, we have we not have we have, we haven't done the podcast since we announced the meetup. I mean, it's too late to get tickets yeah. because they have instantly sold out. By instantly, I do mean it was a day and a few hours, but that's still pretty instant. Yeah. But we're doing our first meetup in Brooklyn, which is crazy. Hopefully, it's the first of many, many, many. Yep. But we're looking forward to that. And we're thinking about live shows. Live shows. shows. Yeah. And so. who the hell knows what would happen to us? Who the those? hell do we think we are? I don't know. And you can find us on TikTok <laughs> at. Good Children Pod. I'm at Be Quiet Joe. I'm at Andrew underscore Musky. Don't forget to do your homework. Like, subscribe, hit that bell button. Spread the good word, rate and review. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. So raise your glass if you are wrong. In all the right ways, I'm an underdog. We will never mean, never mean anything but loud. A nitty gritty, dirty little freaks. I'm achy. I feel horrible.